sad. Like, Think of the message that they're getting, especially if they watch these Red Pill uh, podcasts or if they watch these feminist podcasts. Both of them are both as bad as each other. She was like, and he was like, what? I thought you liked me. She goes, it's Dubai. It's Dubai. You have to pay. Absolutely. Andrew Tate. But here's what it is. Men like sex. They like pretty women. Women want investment. Men want loyalty or whatever it is. Isn't prostitution the oldest business in the world? Do you think Kanye is the only rich man she knows? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am very, very excited to have Sadia Khan on my podcast. Not only is she stunning, she's a psychologist. She actually gives people advice on relationships and trauma. She's got thousands of followers on TikTok and Instagram. Sadia is now based here in Dubai and offers online coaching online. And I'm honored to have her here on my podcast today. Sadia, how are you? I'm very well. That's a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. And can I say how excited I am as well? Because I'm really craving some female energy in some of these podcasts because at the moment I've just been doing a lot of uh, men. And as much as I love that, I do really want to know what females want to know about relationships. So I'm really excited and thank you for having me. No, honestly, it's <laughs> been an honor. I've been following you uh, online for a while now mm -hmm. and um, I've seen some of the stuff that you talk about and actually hearing some of your podcasts as well. You really have... <laughs> got so much information for people to you know for people that actually need to know about this stuff like yeah. relationships and how certain things affect people so just want to know like you came to Dubai you're from London yeah how long have you been in Dubai about two and a half years I, I've only been here two and a half years but I act like I was born and raised here because I talk about Dubai like I, it's like my city mm -hmm. and I, it's really become my home because I'm just very grateful to live here I absolutely love it I crave a bit of London because it's just more slow pace and it's calmer. So sometimes I crave London, but I am now a Dubai, a wannabe Dubai citizen <laughs> is what I like to call myself. I just love it here. So yeah. If the king's listening. And if anyone <laughs> wants to give me a golden visa, <laughs> I always, I do always like big up Dubai wherever I go. So I feel like somebody should pick up on it yeah, and give me a visa. Where where you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dubai for me, I feel like has How been... How are you finding it? You're new here, right? Yeah, so I've been over here, I think, like, over 14 months now. Okay. And at first, I absolutely hated Dubai. Because when you... I just... I don't know. Like, I'm like... My spirit animal is a cat. And my fiancé always says that. Like, uh. any new environments, anything that's different, uh -huh. I start panicking. Right. Um, and I just didn't like the idea of something so new and so different. Oh, yeah, Cause shell shock. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, it, and it's so different here. Like you have to level up yeah. as an individual. Like I was at, I was in London doing my thing and mm -hmm. I was just coasting. Yeah. And then when I came to Dubai, I really leveled it up. It really does separate the men from the boys. And even for the women, it's, 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 a, it's not for the weak. It's, yeah, really it's really not, not for the weak. It really is survival of the fittest. It's definitely not for everybody. Um, but for me, it caters to my personality really well yeah, because yeah. I'm outgoing and I'm an extrovert and I love the sun. So for me, it's it's really is my vibe, but it's definitely not for everybody. I don't recommend it for everybody. It's not for the weak. It really does separate the men from the boys, I would say that. I think so too. Yeah. I think when I first came here, I was, I was a bit weak. Yeah, <laughs> well, it does that to you. It yeah, does that yeah. to you because there's no such thing as a basic person really yeah, you're always yeah. around extra extra in every way so it can be intimidating yeah like everywhere you go there was someone on something someone's hustling someone's doing something something on there and there's beautiful women beautiful really rich men so it's intimidating for both um but i'm about that life so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I've, I've become about I'm that about life about that life so it works for me <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. but it's not for everybody i don't recommend it to everybody yeah so you know you're obviously a relationship coach mm -hmm. and you've got experience in that sector I come across a lot of men mm -hmm. and they actually tell me that dating women in Dubai yeah. is harder than anywhere else in the world. Why is that? Uh, because the women are 10 steps ahead of the men. We, what do you mean by that? we always know men are up to no good, usually. Women know that if he's a player and stuff, men are terrible, terrible at spotting women that are players. They have no clue, they're so naive about women. Men are so naive about women. They'll see a woman who's got all these red flags and still fall for it. Whereas for women, we know men are players. We've been conditioned to know men sleep around, men mm. might cheat. So we know to what signs to look out for. Men have been conditioned to think only men cheat. They've been conditioned to think it's, a, oh, women are biologically not into cheating and men are biologically supposed to cheat. It's absolutely not the case in this day and age because Dubai attracts um, women who are here for a lifestyle, not for love. 
So they don't care like to be committed and loyal to one person. And you're not going to be the only rich man or the only successful man she knows. She knows 10 of you. Do you know what? I said that to one of my friends mm -hmm. and I was like, he thinks he's quite a Casanova. Mm -hmm. And he came to Dubai and... Uh, <laughs> did, did Dubai humble him? Or? Oh my God, listen, listen, this story is so funny. Yeah. Um, so he stayed, he was staying with us yeah. and he came to Dubai and we were at the Burj Al Arab yeah. Sal. Um, which I is love a, Sal. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. Uh, it's quite expensive, but it's super nice. Yeah. So we were there and um, we were all sat down on the beach beds and we were just really enjoying ourselves. He, mm -hmm. he was like kind of strutting his stuff, smoking a vape, like just thought he was like hot shit. <laughs> is he from London? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good um, and then um, two girls went by and he went up to them, spoke to them and he got their number. Straight away, he was just like gassed. Yeah, he was yeah, yeah. so excited that he got two of their numbers. They added him into a group chat. So he's like telling us, oh, like, I'm gonna get two girls. Yeah. Like, wow, they're all on me. Yeah. Like, super excited. And then um, we went out for dinner with him. It mm -hmm. was our last night, so we went out to a restaurant and we were in DIFC and he went to Amazonico to mm -hmm. meet the girls. Mm -hmm. So the night goes by, they're having drinks and like, it's about to end, the night's about to end and they go, you gonna sort us out, babe, yeah? <laughs> yeah, babes. Yeah, babes, <gasps> yeah. you gonna sort us out? Yeah. And he went, what? I thought you went out with me because you liked me. Oh my God, oh. are you fucking dumb? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> she saw a watch that she liked and they thought free dinner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then um, she was like, and he was like, what? I thought you liked me. She goes, it's Dubai. It's Dubai. You have to pay. Absolutely. And when he came home and he told us. What, did he think he didn't have to pay for that? Yeah, he thought that, that it was like, it was all game. He, he thought that it was their treat. No, he just thought oh. it was game. Like, oh, okay. It was just game, as in, like, he, at the end of the night, is he going to sort them out? Ah, like, okay. oh, we're going back home with each other, yeah. right? You're going to pay us. Yeah. Uh, oh, it wasn't just the bill. It wasn't no, the dinner. No, no, ah, it was okay. just the whole thing. Uh -huh. And he was so humbled when yeah, he came yeah. home. He was like, oh, I don't think Dubai's for me. Yeah. And I don't think Dubai is for those sorts and of... And the thing is, with London men, they get they come to uh, Dubai, they'll sit in Namos and stuff, and they're like, that girl was looking at me, this girl was looking at me. And it's like, yeah, because she sees you as somebody who's going to pay she sees you as a client it's not oh, that girl was looking at me because i'm so hot so they get excited and then they realize everybody has a price tag everybody everybody has a, has price, a price, price tag, tag if she's yeah. looking at you it's not because you're hot it's because she's seen a watch she's seen something and you're in a restaurant that she likes and it's everybody has a price tag unfortunately so do you think like the pool of women in dubai is not necessarily the best pool to pick from if you want a wife uh, it's tricky because there are always good women everywhere. But here's the thing. The men in Dubai like the toxic women. There are beautiful women who are just homely looking for a husband. But the men in Dubai will look for the big BBL, the fillers. They, they look for that, you know, that sex doll looking woman. And then are saying, oh, there's no good girls in Dubai. But you're looking, your pool of women is so limited to that clear red flag. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting work. But usually when a woman's had a lot of work done, she hasn't paid for those surgeries herself. She uses men as a uh, jump off. And so when you see a woman with a lot of surgery, just know women don't like to pay for their surgeries and stuff. So when she's had a lot, that's come from a man. So you're just the next surgery or you're the next rent or you're the next car deposit. And, and if you can't spot that, then you're going to be humbled quick. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think so too. Like, because yeah. recently, okay, so I had a scenario where I was working with this girl mm -hmm. and she comes from a really wealthy family. Yeah. And um, she's working, she's just trying to like f figure her life out. Yeah. And um, she was talking about this girl that lives in, you know, that she sees online that lives in similar building to, yeah. to her. Yeah. And she was like, she gets protects sent to her. She gets APs and she yeah. gets all these ro uh, roses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I had to explain to her, like, you literally was born into a rich family. Yeah. Like, you are her. Yeah, <laughs> she, you, you did that without having to sell your soul. Yeah, yeah. And, and I said, well, if you want to be like that, just go be like that. Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah. But, like, what your mum and your parents have built for you is something completely different. Yeah. So why do you think the younger generation... Or like just just girls in general, like compare themselves to girls that are literally like sugar babies. Yeah, I think it's because it's so visceral. Like social media just shows you what you can be getting for such little uh, effort. 
And I do think the breakdown of the home and the breakdown of a desire to get married makes women now and men think, men think, okay, I don't care about a long-term relationship, I just want sex. And so women are now thinking, I don't care about a long-term relationship, I just want a, a trip to Dubai or I just want a present. So it's become really raw. And people have lost their desire to look for connection. They're looking for an investment. Men either want sexual investment and women just want financial investment. And it's really polarized it because we get so many messages online about how relationships don't work and don't get married and don't find someone and men ain't shit and women are this, women are trash. So people have lost their desire to even look for connection. They're now just looking for an investment. And so we're, we've killed people's desire to even look for something deeper. It's really sad. Yeah, it's really sad. It's quite sad because yeah. I've got nieces and like I actually want to see them get married one day, like to someone and be like in love yeah. and, and have kids and stuff but like that. But think it. of the message that they're getting, especially if they watch these red pill uh, podcasts or if they watch these feminist podcasts, both of them are both as bad as each other. The message they're getting is men are dangerous and they're gonna just abuse you. And women men are getting the message that women are hoes and they're gonna, you know, just finesse you. So you just think game on. Yeah. You know, I've I've come across a lot of girls recently and I feel like it's like the Gen Z generation mm. where like being so free and being so open is like cool. Yeah. And being that sort being of promiscuous. Yeah, being promiscuous, mm. being having it all out on the internet is yeah. supposed to be something that's cool. Even like some women that I've actually worked with, yeah. they boast about um a high value man that they've been with. Yeah. Um and you know, it's just but I, I have been saying this a lot recently that what do we when we go to cultures where the women don't even show their ankles, this because the men in that culture won't have it. They won't have it. A girl, this, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that when we look at social differences, there's cultures out there where there's women who wouldn't even think to show their ankles. And there's this culture where a 12 year old is twerking online. When we look at cultures where the women have changed so much in terms of their promiscuity, you have to look at what men are rewarding. What are the men going towards? Now, if I go to a, a culture where the women are well behaved, it's because the men have them, they don't like promiscuity. They don't reward it. But if you go to a culture like America, the UK, Dubai, they reward promiscuity. Every girl that has her ass out is going to have a million offers, uh, taking her here, this, that, whereas they don't reward good women in these cultures. Whereas if you go to other cultures where the women are submissive and people are always saying, oh, I want to go to a submissive culture, find a girl from back home, it's because the men don't tolerate that nonsense. So if you want to look at why men, women are getting so bad, have a look at the men in that society because they set the tone without them realising they set the tone. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's true because mm. even like I'm quite lucky where... I actually had really strict brothers. Yeah, same. And, <laughs> and dad. <laughs> uh, yeah, strict brothers, strict dad. Yeah. Um, and now I'm so grateful because I actually do a lot of... I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like a super traditional woman, yeah. but I cook every day yeah. and I know how to cook. And out of all my friends, none of my friends know how to cook. Yeah. They're all like 25, 26. They yeah. don't even know how to cook, which mm. for me is like bizarre. Yeah. And my mum used to make me watch her peel like 20 onions <laughs> and like 50. Even the youngest, because in our family, like as they got young, you're the youngest, yeah, right? Yeah, the as youngest. they got younger, they got more and more more useless you yeah and you're not in yours no yet? no oh good <laughs> no i'm it. like in the house i don't really need to cook with when yeah, all my so, siblings are yeah, there because they're we're there. all quite competitive so mm. like the oldest wants to cook and the other one wants to cook <laughs> and it's just like i just sit there and not do anything yeah. but with like my in-laws and stuff like every sunday when we were all together i'd cook something yeah. and like christmas dinners or mm. just like just go out there and create that and, family and you enjoy environment. cooking for you i love it yeah in, love in it. our culture it's like there's an enjoyment in being able to feed not just the men but everybody but here there's a lot of resentment towards that. Yeah, like, why like, should I? Yeah, I don't cook. Yeah, and, and the other thing I notice in Dubai, because they've got a lot of access to nannies, what happens is the women completely don't do anything for their man. And uh, they they have all these nannies cooking and cleaning, and the man still craves his wife cooking for him or his wife ironing. Or his, I know it sounds silly, but it's no, just it's what true. they like. It's true. It's just, just like how we like, even if we're making a lot of money, we still want our man to pay for the dinner. Like We yeah, still yeah. like it because it's our need. For men, they still desire a woman that will cook and look after them because it makes them feel loved. In Dubai, what happens is they get all the nannies and they can't remember the last time they touched, uh, you know, the, uh, made a sandwich for their husband. And then they wonder why their husband feels resentful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he starts to think, I'm creating this life for both of us. You've got nannies, you've got a driver, and you don't even get me a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm trying to make your life easier, but you don't do anything to make my life easier. Because, you know, men, they want a little bit of something. They, they, but they, they don't say it as well. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they don't say it. And especially when kids come, they get jealous of, like, how much attention now goes to the child. Really? Yeah, a lot. 
lot. This is a common, common cause. Uh, men, and this is something they don't talk about, when oh, they wow. have children, one of the things that happens a lot, and one of the reasons why um, cheating is a lot higher after the they become fathers, is because they go from having the woman's entire world to now she's just with the kids, and she's just all day, every day with the kids, and they get jealous. They get jealous. I didn't know They that. want attention, so they seek it elsewhere rather than saying it. Because you come home and she's busy and, and they crave her again and they don't get access to her as much. And so they start to get jealous and resentful. And instead of saying it, they go elsewhere. And this is one of the common problems that they have. And then they, when they lose their family, they're like, shit, I want my family back. Because they were craving attention, not craving that other woman. That other woman is usually meaningless. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always meaningless, the it's other woman. You, a w other woman, they, his, I always say to men who come to me and they're saying, oh, I'm thinking about leaving my wife for an, my mistress. And I always say, your wife is a package and your mistress is a person. She comes with kids, shared memories, your families know each other. It's an entire package. Are you going to be okay with losing that for your one person? Because you're going to wake up and you're not going to hear the pitter-patter of your kids running down and fighting with each other. Or you're going to be with this woman and your mom isn't going to call to see how she is doing. And all of these things that are a package when you're with a person for a long time. Are you sure you want to throw that away for one brand new person? Because they can't fill that void. And then they think about it and then they realize that they were actually just chasing a bit of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm. you, you don't realize that actually men need a lot of attention. Oh, babies. They're babies. They're just tall babies, but they pretend that they don't. They mask it. They're like, I don't care. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. But they crave it. And instead of saying it, they seek it. Yeah. When all you have to do is express it. And and of course, she's got two hands. She, she might be busy and she might not be able to meet your needs. And some women are really difficult about that. They just think, well, get over it. But we don't just get over it. We have to try. This is how relationships work. You have to try. And so the women that think, get over it, like I've got kids, get over it. They're, it's a slow suicide for their marriage. But the women that think, oh, shit, oh, maybe I need to, you know, get back on track with you, they tend to save their marriages. Yeah, yeah, because I even know, like, I've seen um, I've seen a few marriages fall apart and yeah. it always comes down to attention, attention. and communication. Yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask you is, we've spoken about me uh, women being hard to date in Dubai. Why are the men hard to date here in Dubai? Uh, because they enjoy toxicity. They they don't they enjoy toxicity. They enjoy pleasure. What do you mean by that? Um, they don't they because Dubai is a pleasure seekers island. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I still want my visa, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but it is a pleasure seekers island. What I mean by this is there's constant dopamine all day, every day. Uh, look, uh, praise be to God, look at your view. Like, look at the dopamine when you look at your view and stuff. This is what Dubai is like. Every day is pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. So what happens is the brain starts to seek pleasure rather than peace. And when men or women, when they meet someone peaceful, they label it as boring. And they're always seeking somebody who gives them some form of pleasure or dopamine. And the best person that gives you dopamine is a toxic attachment. What happens with the toxic attachment is you get preoccupied with that person. You're thinking about them, where are they, why aren't they called, blah, blah, blah. And that toxic attachment, they mislabel that as love. And it's just preoccupation. So they forget to look for peace. They consider somebody where it's boring, simple, monotonous, they consider that boring. But isn't, like, the thing is, I get what you're saying, but don't you think, like, where you, when you are in a monotonous, boring relationship, it can get boring. So how can you... But here's the thing, life gets boring. Yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. People w are constantly thinking, but my marriage has gotten boring. How do I change it? Well, how do you change it? Maybe you need to change your mindset and accept that life gets boring. But surely you can just change your mindset about like trying to make things more exciting and you can try you and can. work on stuff and just become different. You know, because... Over time, when you meet someone from the start to, you know, 10 years down the line, you change. Yeah. You have different interests, you have different things that you like, yeah. and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, like, surely, like, how, how do you maintain how that? How do you maintain that? How do you... I, you know what? My honest advice, I always say this to people, is, of course, it gets monotonous and difficult. But when you meet somebody, girl or guy, who kind of accepts that life gets a bit boring and understands that not every day is pleasure, but more so wants intimacy, connection, and stability rather than excitement, you're on to a marriage. Mm -hmm. Because that's what marriage is. It's not, ex you habituate to your partner, you get used to them. And um, people that seek stability, if you look at your parents' lifestyle and the ones that have lasted so many years, there's very little excitement, it's duty. 
it's duty, stability, predictability that they look for in their relationship, and that's what they strive for. They don't actually look for pleasure-seeking and excitement. And I think, unfortunately, and I'm guilty of this as well, when the relationship loses its excitement, we assume it's lost its love. Yeah. But really, it's lost its novelty. And novelty is only available in new relationships. So what happens is people are craving the feeling in new relationships rather than enjoying the stability of existing relationships. Wow, that's so true. That was a good line. That was a good <laughs> <laughs> I made that up on the spot, but you, it sounds no, good. No, <laughs> literally, it sounded, I, I think sometimes, like, even I've seen a lot of marriages fail because, like, they're like, oh, it's Craving monotonous, it's, bo it's boring, or she's boring, or he's boring. Uh, and it's how society's conditioned us. We... Like I remember when I was a kid watching TV, I'd have to sit through adverts and be bored and bored through the adverts or even in the cinema, I'd be bored in the adverts. But now there's no time for boredom. It's like quick, 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 quick watch the next thing, three minute video. We don't create a culture of boredom or monotony or patience. We create pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. And as a result, that translates into real life. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and um, she's really, really bright. And she, we were talking about how they're going to invent flying cars. And um, she's like, we can save so much time, like no traffic. And I said, I know, but traffic is the only time where I'm forced to be patient. And I think it's, I need it because I've got ADHD. I'm so impatient. Traffic is the only time I've got no control. I have to be patient. If we remove the parameters that create patience in society, in relationships, we become zero tolerance. That's why I think yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like we've become like zero tolerance now. Zero tolerance. It has yeah, to be like novelty. It has to be exciting. Even when you hear some people go, I want a man that has this. I want a man yeah. that has this. Or even people in relationships now where they might do one thing and they're like, right, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Like, uh, well, do you feel uh, like disposable. society's... We've gotten uh, disposable. Everything is disposable. If you Like, we've gotten... And that's why I say society trickles down into relationships. It's not... You can't divorce the two. So what goes on society will be um, manifested in your relationship. So if we have a, a, rela a relationship with society where Amazon Prime, you get something straight away or something like cheap clothes, so you throw them out or whatever it is, you replace, replace, replace that becomes a culture in your relationships as well. So one small thing, quick, let's get rid of it and start again. And that's the culture we have now. What do you think like women are gonna struggle with in the next few years with, with relationships? Uh, I think what they'll struggle with is they're going to lose touch with their authenticity. And what I mean by that is because we're so driven to become something else now, either look a certain way, address a certain way, act a certain way, act like a bad bitch or whatever it is, what women and most people crave is an authentic, uh, solid connection. And what we're going to struggle with and we're going to see a rise in is people becoming inauthentic to get acceptance and to get notoriety. And so what that's going to look like is a bunch of fake connections and then a very hollow sense of self in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's another good line, Sadia. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Sadia. Oh Everybody. my God, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we have to yeah. put the applause. Do you know on. what? I, why I'm happy? I said that is because I've got a female this time, and a female asking me questions. I haven't thought about these questions before, so it's kind of a bit more spontaneous. Yeah. So I'm coming up with things that I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I've so seen a lot of your stuff where yeah. it's been like a lot of like red Men. pill, like yeah. and, and people that like you know. I've got nothing against him. I think he's great and what he's done, like Andrew Tate, um, free Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh, I miss him. Don't you miss him yeah. coming up on your feed, just yeah. talking nonsense? Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, with the shades. I, yeah, I miss him. Where are you at, Tate? Oh, We're hopefully, inshallah, <laughs> soon. Inshallah, soon. We're waiting for him, inshallah. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Tate. Yes. I, I feel like he's been quite helpful for women as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think, I mean, I, I'm a fan of Andrew. I've got no um, qualms with Andrew. But here's the thing. it's uh, You're taking a very hyper-successful man with a, a hyper-pleasure-seeking uh, environment and him giving his perspective to the average Jimmy in his basement, it just doesn't work. And as much as I love him and I understand his message and it really appeals to the people I know, um, I'm talking from a perspective of a girl of a girl that could be, you know, what they talk about, like, oh, you can, you know, get a dinner for free or you could go on a yacht and blah, blah. So I get what he's saying, but the majority of the world doesn't get that. And so that's why I feel like sometimes it's falling onto the hands of the wrong audience. But, like, I feel like since I... Because I think growing up in the culture and the background that I have, 
um, you kind of know like what you have to do as a woman. Like mm. I'm sure. Yeah, but a we, lot of people. That's true. That's a. I, I think I know what you're going to yeah, say. Like, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. When guests come, make coffee, tea. Yeah. When th when there's people here, you know, hospi mm. we're hospitality. Yeah. We we know how to do it. Um, but I feel like he's helped a lot of women understand. Yeah. Um, their place in some sense yeah like, you know if and he, he really does uh, and the thing is this is a problem that happens with the men that follow him is that they take on board what he says about masculinity and forget what he tells men about how to be chivalrous and how to treat women he, they just ignore that part and they focus on the fact that i can sleep with lots of women and i don't need to do this and men are this blah blah, blah. so they take it wrong but his actual message is actually a healthy one on the whole there are things that i disagree with but on the whole it's a healthy message and um but it just it's men are being very selective of what they're taking on board and women are being very selective by what they're offended by yeah, Whereas, yeah, yeah. yeah and then both of them are, are being very polarized but if you take his overall message there's a lot of good in there yeah, yeah i think so too mm -hmm. it's um such a shame that the media took it out of context yeah um and i, and I actually feel like he's at because i've met a lot of young guys actually my team mm -hmm. they absolutely love andrew oh Tate. everybody loves andrew um, Tate. Uh, everybody the younger does. i did an interview with him and i remember having like cousins in pakistan who are so young and were so excited about it andrew and i'm like how did like, andrew Tate be you're like all excited <laughs> and i'm like how do you know him and everybody knows him i think even my dad might even know who he is and for my dad to know someone then you must be super famous because yeah, he doesn't yeah, know yeah, anyone yeah. so yeah no he, he's uh, it's incredible how one person can have such an influence though isn't it yeah yeah incredible even like my nephews and stuff like um that they'll say something which is like quite soft yeah and i'm like you just need to listen to Andrew <laughs> and, <then they're> and <laughs> um was there anything that you disagree with <sighs> like from I a think female's I th perspective I I just think he was like when you're in the social media space a lot of the stuff is for clout like yeah. he was doing it it was all an act mm -hmm. and you can kind of tell like a lot of it was an act mm -hmm. um the only the only thing that I think was bad about him is his tonality and how he said stuff mm -hmm. because if you've not watched his long form stuff yeah. you actually think the guy's being deadly serious yeah, yeah. um and that's the only thing I'd yeah. say and okay. um if a girl's doing only fans you know, uh, and it's his girlfriend. She has to give the money to him. Yeah, yeah. I think that was just for like I don't I don't get it. What about you? Well, having met Andrea, I don't think it's complete lie. It's something that he probably would do as a joke. I think he would definitely yeah. do that as a joke. Um, but a lot of what he says, he is that person. He is that you know alpha charismatic. He is that guy. He is very opinionated. He is very strong. Um, but I would love to, if inshallah he ever comes out, I would love to. Um, and sit down and just dissect some of the things that I think are leading to uh, relationships falling apart because some of them do fall apart when they take on board what he says and they go down the oh as in being say, a high value yeah, guy and dating and they multiple take it and, women yeah and that sort of stuff the dating multiple women and this that and the other that sort of stuff it doesn't lead to a conducive happy home environment because you know what now that we're on that topic yeah I've actually met a lot of women that are dating guys that are quite high value and they yeah. give them the option yeah, uh, to well, be able but to the thing about. is, I always say that women actually just want an investment. Now, if you give her a financial investment, she's OK about the emotional monogamy because that's a form of investment. But if there's no financial investment, she expects more emotional investment. So you just got to balance it out. You, we want investment, whether that's financial, emotional, whatever it is. Now, if you're not covering us financially, you better give us all of you emotionally. Mm -hmm. But if you're covering us financially, for a lot of women, they're like, okay, maybe you might step out, but I get to live this life, live this house, have this car. I know you care about me. Is there anything wrong with that? No. No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's a, a, because it's a form of care. It is a form of care. It's a, it's a form of love, it's a form right? Of care. Like of saying, and, uh, it's a form of investment. You've got to, we've got to accept the way men and women are designed rather than reject it and judge it. Women want investment. Men want loyalty or whatever it is. Yeah. So if women want investment, and if you want to step out and do all of those things, pick a woman who accepts financial investment as a form of investment. Don't pick a woman who wants emotional investment. She's going to not find that enough. She's going to want loyalty. So you just got to pick your woman. But every woman tips on the scale, whether she wants more financial or whether she wants more emotional. If you want to step out and you've got the resources for it, find that woman that wants the more, as long as she's got her financial investment, she's good. Don't choose the one that needs emotional investment. Usually it's the ones that have been hurt or traumatized. They need more emotional. They don't care about the finances. Because, you know, other women would judge other women no. for having that. No, like having ha having Jeez. having a, a high value man 
and essentially he steps uh, out yeah essentially he steps out and they're like oh my god yeah you know well, like what w- why are women judging the other woman um, because it's that? easy to judge a situation you can't access when you can access a man that's taking you left right and center and paying for everything and taking you first class then tell me what you would do in that situation. It's very easy to judge circumstances that you can't access, but when you can access it, then you can form a more informed judgment. So I think the people that judge it can't access it, so they don't even know what that life looks like. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I think they judge. Yeah, because I've I've seen many cases or I've heard, oh, you know, so-and-so's partner cheats and stuff like that, but it's like... it's. It, for me, in, in some cases, it, it's kind of like an open marriage, no? Or is well, it? I always say that high-value men are more likely to be cheated on back. They just don't realise it. Really? Absolutely. I always say rich men are the most likely to be cheated on, especially in Dubai. Why? Because the women they choose. What? The women, when you're a broke man, you're limited in terms of the women you can access. Yeah. You can only access the limited range of women. So you're only going to access a simple kind of woman because you're a simple man. That simple woman doesn't have many options. So you're both optionless and you're both good to go. You've got a connection, you're good to go. Now, if you are um, a high-value man, let's take, let's say, for example, you're a, a George Clooney, you can access whoever you want in the world, right? whoever you want. So you could choose a Kim. If you're Kanye, you can choose a Kim. Do you think Kanye is the only rich man she knows? No. Do you think Kanye is the best she can get? She can get many of you. So what happens is as a man becomes more successful, his criteria and selection of women becomes more provocative, promiscuous. It's usually the dream girl. That dream girl knows 10 of you. But if you choose that, you know, simple girl that works in Starbucks, of course she's going to be loyal to you. But what high value man chooses that? He chooses the sexiest girl on screen. So he's always, I always say to men who are high value rich, especially in Dubai, before I've even met that girl, I'm like, she's cheating on you. Why? Because she likes you for your lifestyle and she knows plenty of men with your lifestyle. You're just covering her current bills. I feel bad for men now. Like, I feel like. Don't feel bad for them because they choose this life. They can easily choose a simple, nice woman, but they choose this life. Yeah, but still, it's like, you know, they work. They so work hard. They work hard. They, you know, go to the gym. They try <laughs> and be like they've become masculine. They cover the bills. They're just trying to it find. Is a, it's a really it's poor deal hard. for them. It's because quite It's hard. a really poor deal because what happens is they're the ones doing everything. Yeah, yeah. Both are cheating, but she's doing it on your watch and she's doing it with your credit card. So he's getting a way worse deal. Way worse deal. But I always say it's your selection process. Who tells you to date these kind of women that you know, you know, had a billionaire in the past and has had all this work done? You think she got that for free? It's your sele- You have to look at your selection process. As you get more successful, you choose more promiscuous. What do you expect? Mm. Yeah, but they always do. You don't see footballers flying out uh, a librarian. <laughs> you know, they, you don't, they're not going to go fly out a teacher on a na- lad's app. They're flying out the OnlyFans girl. And it's only a matter of time before you get lost in the source and you make that OnlyFans girl your girlfriend. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So ha- ha- what's the selection for girls then? Let's just say uh, I'm single. Yeah. Um, hypothetically, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't yeah. been for five no, years. Let's not um, do that. <laughs> um, let's just say I'm single. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm in the current dating market right now. How can you find a, a, a nice guy? Uh, I would say instead of thinking about what you want, is think about what you need. And your needs come from sometimes your own traumas. Yeah, from your own childhood, what was ma- missing? Where were you hurt? What are your core kind of beliefs and values about yourself? And choose somebody who soothes you when you get anxious, who makes your life feel more soothing and calming. That's going to lead to a long-lasting relationship. But if you are traumatized and you think, oh, but he's buying me this, he's doing this for me, so you, you, you haven't found somebody who soothes your anxiety, so you're not going to find your partner through that. Interesting. Yeah. But like... That's quite, men are not that soothing, are they? The right man can be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> men are not that soothing. I love that. <laughs> but you you yeah, know, the masculine, you like, I've got three brothers, and then obviously my partner, he's actually... Well, really here's how you choose it. You look at their current lifestyle and think, would that lifestyle make me more anxious or less anxious? Okay. It's not about changing anybody. 
if I know I've got certain traumas and I'm certain uh, anxious a certain way, it would be stupid of me to try and be with the Chris Brown. It'd be stupid of me. He's, that I'm going to be traumatized. I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be waiting by the phone every day and not getting a call and watching him on stage grind on every girl on the planet. Like, what am I fucking doing that to myself? Whereas if I know my traumas, I know that, okay, I do need a lot of love and attention and connection. I'm not going to choose the most high value man who's busy all day, every day, because I actually need somebody who comes home at five o'clock. I need consistency. Mm -hmm. But if I choose a CEO, he's flying out, he's doing this. And that. So instead of chasing a lifestyle, I chase what will soothe my genuine anxieties and create a connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, what would you say is a high value woman? Um, I say this about the same thing about everything. It's I would imagine... I actually don't know if I'm being yeah, honest. I actually yeah. don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I I'm being I honest. Am. But I think I am. Yeah, I, I, uh, me. <laughs> I don't actually know. What I would consider a high-value woman is, I would always say somebody who adds value. Yeah, they, it's not a leech. Adds value. Some way, shape, or form adds value to a man's life. That value, I did a video on this, so actually I should say I do know. Uh, in my opinion, it always adds value. You, you know that leech kind of woman who just sits home and lo looks pretty? It gets it gets dry quick. Now you run out of conversation, you run out of a, a novelty and excitement, and you're not inspired by that woman anymore. Mm. So I would say she adds value in some way, shape, or form. Maybe she takes away your domestic duties, or maybe she takes away some of your emotional concerns. She adds some value to your life rather than just taking it. Um, the other thing I would say with high-value women is they need to be feminine. They have to be in touch with their nurturing side. They have to love kids. Not even if you don't want kids. The woman that loves kids and loves nurturing, she treats you better than the woman who's like, I don't want kids, I don't want this, I don't want that, blah, blah. They treat you better. Nurturing women teach, treat you better. So women that loves children, loves family, loves this, good background, that doesn't make a difference. And the final thing I would say is women with boundaries. What happens with women with clear boundaries and you know you're going to lose her if you act a certain way, it makes a man exercise more self-control. It makes a man become a better version of himself. But when she accepts anything and everything, he becomes like a dog without a leash. And they don't want that. Truly, they want some boundaries. Everybody does. I think men actually like quite... Most men like feisty women. Yeah, they do. Well, they like feisty, but more so boundaries rather than feisty. They yeah, don't yeah. want to be fighting all the time, but they do want to know there's a threshold yeah, of how yeah. much you can like get the, away there's with. Like, there's like... The, like you threshold. said, they, they need to know They need boundaries. They're like children and like every, like everybody. We need boundaries. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't know what we're doing. We become lawless. Yeah. And uh, relationships, you need some boundaries. You need some laws in the relationship. Yeah. You need some rules. It brings out stuff. the best in you. Yeah, I think it so. Brings out the, if I have a partner that accepts me hitting him, cheating on him, swearing at him, I become a woman I don't like. Mm -hmm. So why would I want a partner like that? Similarly, if a man has a woman who lets her hit him, lets him swear, there's no way he's going to feel good being with a woman no, like that. No. Let's him cheat. Even though they claim they love cheating, Cheating, there's an element of shame and guilt after every time you can't control yourself. Really? Absolutely. What, men, men feel guilty after well, cheating? of course. Yeah. Oh, you sound surprised. <laughs> because I just thought it was just... I mean, they all they talk condition about... It. I, I the the way that they explain it is in... A lot of men will disagree, and I'm going to get lots of, like, incels who've never even had a girlfriend say, no, we don't cheat, no, no, we don't feel guilty, but they do. And if you don't feel guilty, you've divorced emotion from attachment, and that's not good. That's not good either. If you don't feel any guilt when you cheat, because here's why you should feel some level of shame. You're living two lives. Anybody who lives inauthentically should feel guilty or should feel ashamed of themselves because you're still not in your masculine if you're living two lives. Mm -hmm. You have not got the balls to say to somebody, I'm doing this tonight. When you can't express what you're actually, who you truly are and you're living a double life, how can you be a masculine man? The men that actually say, I'm married to two women, I've got three girlfriends, There's a, yeah, they don't feel any shame or guilt because they're expressing their authentic self. But the man who has to hide his phone, run here, uh, send his location there, run, what nonsense is this? How are you a high-value man if you're scared your girlfriend's going to ring you at a certain time? You're shook of her. So live an authentic life and then you won't feel any shame or guilt. But the guy that has to hide it, even if he doesn't feel any guilt for cheating on his girlfriend, he feels some shame that he has to live a double life. Yeah. No one likes living a double life. It's not it's not conducive to good mental health. Interesting. Wow, so many golden nuggets here, oh, Sadia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, 
Mm. There's a few TikToks that you've made that have oh gone God. viral. Yeah. And I, I hate my TikTok. I love them. I hate my TikTok. It's so messy. Mm, it's, so it's so much going on. There's it's like so me, addictive. It's actually. so addictive and I'm so ratchet on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I send them to my uh, partner. I'm like, see? <laughs> my <laughs> mum sends them around to people. Can you believe oh, that? Yeah, wow, bless yeah. her. Yeah. I heard um, one yeah. of the things that you said in one of your podcasts. Your yeah. mum is the one that yeah. got you online. Absolutely. She she forced me. Uh, originally, she forced me to become a psychology teacher because she just said, I... I I teach well and she forced me to go down that route and then she got sick of kind of like seeing my potential like in because in, she would see me like do speeches on weddings and like just in conversations she she watches me all the time and she'd be like why aren't you on a stage why did, go on a stage go online go online every day go online and then uh, she forced me you really really forced me and then it just went from there so yeah I do owe her a lot of credit for that that's amazing thank you Sadia's mum I hope you're I love you this. so much I miss her really we the really moment. appreciate your I help. really miss her I haven't seen I'm actually a bit upset with her because she's supposed to come out to Dubai and she hasn't come yet and she keeps saying she'll book a ticket it's okay we forgive you no we don't <laughs> call me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you did one of these TikToks about why are hot women psychos or crazy yeah why are hot girls crazy I love that video yeah <laughs> yeah right well I, well, I see, I always say this. It's like um, two women have completely different experiences of the same man. We could meet the same man and you have a completely different experience to what I would have of him. And you, I might have a completely different experience of how you have it. And with hot girls, they get the worst version of men. They really get the worst ver version of men. Again, the men in the comments, oh, you're blaming us. But here's what it is. Men like sex. They like pretty women. So when they see a pretty girl and a hot girl, they can't help but become a guy that's trying to conquer her, or try, they're trying to get her, and he'll risk it all. If he's married, he doesn't care. If it's at the gym, he doesn't care. If it's at work, he'll cross the work boundaries. They lose their sense of professionalism or their sense of like loyalty just to kind of get an access to her. So she starts to go through life thinking, men are trash. This guy had a girlfriend. This guy was married. That guy's my boss. And he still moved to me. I still tried to be, my London comes out here. He, he still tried to get to me. So she starts to see men as creatures who can't control their sexual urges whereas you take a basic or plain Jane she can be in a bikini next to a guy and he doesn't even notice her and so she thinks men are they're, they're, in, they're fine they're sufferable they don't do anything so she's far more like oh yeah go on a lad's holiday oh you can go Ibiza oh you can do this no worries blah blah whereas a girl that's on the receiving end of going to Ibiza and the guy saying go on my table today or you're not leaving or, or taking you to the top tables and stuff she's watching you every time you go out on a night out do you think like a lot of the hot girls, um, you know, that are available in this market now, um, most of them have become like sugar babies? I think so. I think if you come from a broken home, especially if you don't have a family uh, background, um, and I do understand that this is no judgment, but when you don't have a, a home um, with one parent missing, what happens then you don't have accountability to two people. And you just do what you've got to do to make ends meet. Sometimes you don't even need to make ends meet, but it becomes addictive. When you, when you, it's so easy, right? When you divorce sex from any emotion and you see it as an activity, why not get paid for that activity? And so this is what culture has done. It's slowly and steadily taken women to this point. First thing was to create the idea of sex before marriage. Then it was the idea of a spontaneous sex. Then it was the idea of one night stands. Then it's now the idea of why are you doing one night stands? Get paid for it. If you don't care about the guy, you're never going to see him again. Why would you waste your body? Might as well make money. So society has conditioned us to get more and more provocative. But hasn't prostitution isn't prostitution the oldest business in the world? It was for people who were desperate. Now it's for people who just want to get their nails done. Wow. I mean, you know, one thing I've seen since I've come to Dubai is the sugar baby lifestyle yeah, here. Yeah, it's so real. It's so like I'd always see like YouTube videos. No, about you'll it. see it now. Like when you go to Starbucks, you'll see yeah, the sugar yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. I, but I'd always watch like a YouTube video. I'm a sugar baby, and this yeah, is. Yeah. What I got. And I thought it was some hidden thing, and I was like, oh, I wonder what it's like. Now I it's just what it's like, like. Oh, she's right there. <laughs> yeah, just ask her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and mm. um, it's it's so glorified here. Well, it's or here or around the world. Forget yeah, here. I, don't I think, think it's, it's in it's every here. big city, even Miami. But this is in cultures where you minimise the emotional attachment to sex. And men, this is another thing men are delusional about. They think women have, uh, can't uh, have sex with that emotion. Yes, they can. How do you think prostitutes have done it their whole lives? They can when they decide to make monetize it. 
Well, I feel like it affects women on because I've I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson. Shout yeah. out to JP. <laughs> Man <you>. like JP. <laughs> <laughs> Man like <laughs> yeah. um, and he he's, he spoke a lot about um, women and you, you know sexual attachment and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I feel like women that are in that industry or they're in that space, they have more higher chance of like suicide or Absolutely. depression. For and men and women. Here's the thing, we, we've gotten so used to the idea that men and women are different when it comes to sex and men can have sex with everybody and anyone and women can have sex with just one man and all, you know. It, it, but here's the thing, it's psychological for both people. Ask men who cheat, they're usually going through an ego boost. They need an ego boost or they feel unappreciated by their wife or they've just lost their job and they need an escapism. It's psychological. If it was biological, they'd have sex with their wife all day, every day, but they don't. So it's a case of it's, there's an escapism. There's some psychological escapism. Now, for women who do it, it's definitely a sense of she's met people who have used her body so many times against her will that now she's trying to take back control. There's a reason why sex abuse leads to prostitution at a really high rate. They find that sex workers, I'm sure it's different now, because, but the last time they looked at the data before it became glorified, sex workers have a real history of childhood abuse. And what happens is when you've been abused or molested as a child, you, the control has been taken out of your hands. Somebody's accessed your body and violated it without your permission. So to reestablish control, the person who's been a victim starts to then sell their body and say, you can only access me uh, on my terms now. And it's a form of regaining control. But until you undo the trauma, it's going to happen again and again. Wow. So yeah, this is, how do we get from sugar babies to so, this? I'm so sorry. It, yeah, 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 it's yeah, fine. But it's fine. there is an element of that. Yeah, I would imagine they were violated at some point. And I actually think it doesn't even need a violation. I actually think it's the culture of losing your virginity at a young age. Really? Yeah. I think that the reason why we have so many sugar babies now and so much is they lost their virginity at a young age. I used to be a teacher. So for I would have Monday mornings of girls coming into my office and being like, oh, miss, I need to get an abortion quickly. And oh, this uh, awful stuff like this. And uh, they would lose their virginity at such a young age. And the advent of Snapchat meant that 11-year-olds were sending nudes. And it's like, 11, sending nudes? What are you talking? I didn't even know what that, that was a thing. But when you do that at such a young age, there's no way you don't experience shame and guilt. Impossible. Because nobody looks at losing their virginity at 12, 13 years old and thinking, yeah, that was a good idea. So to reestablish control over that experience is to then monetize sex and make sex feel like it's just a job. And then you don't feel so guilty and ashamed of what you did when you were young. So do you think that's where OnlyFans comes Abs in? There's I a would, lot of young girls on there. I now. would highly I would be I would love to do a study on this, but OnlyFans girls Please do I it. would love to yeah, I would love to. Who wants to fund me? I would love to do that. <laughs> where, where it's um OnlyFans girls, I can imagine they lost their virginity either non consensually or too young when you, I don't believe it can be consensual when you're young. It, How young is too young now? Any well the thing is if you, uh, maybe because I worked with kids and I see their kids. They're so, so small. So even 15, 16, which is the legal age, they're kids. There's no decision you can make at 16 and still make the same decision at 30. So it's too young. Yeah, but I could argue that, like, someone in a village of Pakistan, she's got married at 16 and she's... It, but she yeah. didn't lose her virginity. Somebody invested in her. There's a self-esteem attached to that. Somebody's taking the time to marry you and invest in you and you're having a whole courtship and there's a wedding and there's all, and there's a mehr, um, a dowry. Um, so there's no l lack of self-esteem. But a 15-year-old who's been having had sex in the back of a park by a guy that she just wanted him to like her more, and it's not really because she loves him, there's a completely different uh, self-worth that comes attached to that. Interesting. And it's the culture. And, you know, when I was... Uh, a teacher, it would shock me that parents would be like, oh, yeah, so-and-so is just staying at her boyfriend's house this weekend and they'd be 14, 15 years old. And I'd be like, come on, Janet, <laughs> you can be stricter than that, babes. <laughs> What's going on? Um, because they would literally be like, oh, she's staying with her boyfriend or going on holiday with her boyfriend. And they're like 16, 15 years old. They're too young. I think I'd have a panic attack. I would kill... Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I would literally be beside myself if that yeah, was the case. Yeah, 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 I would literally be beside myself because it's just too young. They can't even do their homework on time and you think they should know what their sexual partner should look like. Yeah, 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 100%. I think if I had kids now... Um, oh, you wouldn't be able to... I stopped teaching because of it. Because of the culture in the schools. It's just too, it too traumatising for me to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I think that when it comes to like men investing into women in those villages, they probably feel huge oh, investment. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, you're saving them from poverty a lot of the time. Like they might be from families where I'm not saying it's perfect, but the se- what it does to a woman's self worth is completely different. So yes, yeah, she might be poor and then she gets married at 15 years old, but there's a whole shebang. You know, there's a whole ceremony. It's uh, you know, parents are like giving her away. Um, you feel it, it, like you feel like a woman. They make you feel like a woman, but there's none of that when you're just a teenager who's had a crush on a boy, doesn't know how to get his attention, so now you sleep with him. So talking about self-esteem, a yeah. um, question pops into my head that I've been wanting to ask, wanting yeah. to ask you. Obviously, we've gone on to OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. We, we've spoken about uh, sugar babies. Um, I actually really want to ask you yeah. something that a lot of girls use, even I've used and mm-hmm. I've been addicted and me. to. And, <laughs> uh, face up. Yeah, and filters in general. Filters yeah. in general and face up and face tune. What is the dark side of using those apps? can't have any good consequences I'll be honest because I remember a time when there wasn't any filters I use filters I, I love a filter I do love it um, I know <laughs> so this is no judgment or anything like that yeah use them yeah. but I just want to know but I remember the first time Snapchat came out with filters and stuff and I remember how ridiculous it was, it was like a dog or that, like, like was was it? oh the, my god the, the flowers. Uh, flowers and dogs and I don't know puppies coming out of your head and all that stuff but what it did to you is it showed you a version of your face if you were prettier it's like shows you, oh, if I just lost a bit of weight here, if I just you slim my, had a slimmer nose, if I had like bigger lips, this is what I would look like. Oh my God, perfect. Let me go get that. So it's a form of consumerism. It's a form of implanting an ad- idea and a desire to go and get uh, cosmetics because women consume cosmetics and cosmetics is a huge, huge industry. So I think it is uh, geared towards, and uh, you know, uh, uh, as people say, like uh, girls are starting to look the same now and so on and so forth. And I understand that because it, we're all using the same filters. Yeah, because mm. you know, like, uh, and one of the guys on my team will say this, he, he, he will take professional photos of me mm-hmm. and he'll edit them mm-hmm. and then I'll put face up on them. <laughs> and he's like, but you look better. I said this, you look <laughs> even better in person. Thank you very yeah, much. I really Michelle appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much. Um, so do you yeah Yeah, obsessed (laughs) um Mm. and he was like you look really edited yeah and I'm like do I and he's like and I can't even see it when I do I'll send it to a guy and I'll be like oh what's that and he's like oh that's so edited I'm like that looks so natural to me I look like like this (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah and also it doesn't help like I remember when I was young and stuff um there was no such thing like you would have like a, a, a simple phone so there was no such thing as posting on Instagram and stuff so if you took a bad picture you took a bad picture you wouldn't care but now that picture has to go somewhere it has to yeah, yeah. present to the world with it and if it's not perfect you you feel insecure whereas before a picture would be nothing yeah so i think the pressure and where it's going also adds to that and just the also a pressure of the fact that you know, it's so readily available the instagram generation is really really uh, it's really toxic it is yeah, toxic yeah. and i'm part of it because i am part of uh, instagram as well so yeah. i'm not saying this in a judgmental way i'm saying it from an experienced way it is very toxic um but i just this is why I'm so big on education when like I praise be to God and this is not me trying to say but when people say nice comments about appearance and stuff like that it goes like this to me I I don't care for it but but because I've built something else that I'm proud of which is my brain Mm -hmm. and as a result I'm not dependent and even when they say insults about my looks it doesn't really bother me you you know what I was just saying that the other day to my partner I was like you know, it doesn't. I don't need to be the most stunning, uh, you know, person in the room. I don't need to be the most beautiful because for yeah. me, There's it's about else. my work. Yeah. It's about everything else that and I that's do. That's one of the things that I why I don't find Dubai difficult at all. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people would be like, "Oh, there's so many pretty girls, so many this." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I, I I've worked on something beyond my looks. I yeah. don't compare myself on people on looks. I don't compare myself at all because I know what I have. Praise all praise be to God, is uh, me. Is my like is my education. It's my one way of speaking and so also my personality and stuff so i mean the thing is people only see the educated side online but that's like the even that i don't really rate that about myself if you know me as a person i'm like quite fun and i'm a good friend and all these things so even my friends didn't even know i had all this knowledge because i that's not why they attached to me so because i feel like i've got such a multifaceted personality um the looks part of stuff it is it doesn't feel like a real compliment it goes over my head but if you say something that is more uh linked to something that's unique about me that's when i feel flattered and i think if more women worked on those things they would feel less pressure to be the prettiest girl in the room yeah yeah because even like sometimes i'll get a comment 
um, and maybe about my looks or they'll say, oh, Miss Hamida or somewhere yeah. that, like, and it's, it's great. Like, I really appreciate yeah. it. But when someone compliments my work, yeah, like something that I've spent hours yeah. doing, I will take that compliment and I will just cherish it yeah. so much because it's such a big deal for yeah. me as opposed to like... And I don't really like... I'm really bad with compliments. I really don't... I, I had to put a post out on Instagram once and I was like, please don't, guys, I really appreciate it, but don't give me compliments. I just don't like it. It doesn't sit well with me. I don't know why. It's probably my own like... Maybe I need to analyze where that comes from. But yeah, that's why I would just say that the filter generation in this generation, which I'm I'm not uh, uh, avoiding myself, I'm, I'm guilty of myself, but the focus on appearance comes when you don't focus on other aspects of your being. And then you, what the, but, uh, the bad thing about focusing on your appearance is the only thing we can guarantee will go. Everything else will only develop, but your looks is the only thing I can guarantee you will go. Yeah, so we'll why go. focus on that? Focus on the things that are going to live forever. And that is your mentality, it's your conduct, it's your treatment of others, so on and so forth. So those are things. If Once you work on those, God willing, you'll be less focused on being the prettiest girl or looking a certain way, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Why do you think women are jealous of each other? Um, oh, my God. I, um, this is a topic I could talk about forever. I, I have had really bad experiences with women, if I'm being honest. I've yeah. had terrible experiences my you know entire what? life. I actually saw you post a comment. Someone sent you a DM. Yeah. Um, and, and it was just... Vile, right? Vile. Yeah. My whole it, life I've had this. It was so... I've, you know what? I've had a few. Mine has been like bullying by women. It started even in my home and like family and stuff. I've had a really, really rough ride with women my whole life really rough ride and um it's good and bad the uh, the good thing from it is i'm not as emotionally uh, affected by what they have to say and i don't crave the acceptance i've always just had more men around me more male friends or whatever it is and um i don't judge but one thing and i've become really good at selecting women in my life but one thing i always say is choose female friends i always say two women can be best friends until a man is involved a man is what creates jealousy between women. It's not a man's fault before the men go. I'm not, it's just how we're programmed. What happens is you can have two best friends. The moment they start liking the same man, they're jealous of each other. You can have two, you can have uh, like sisters. The moment that one man that they, and it's really what happens, what causes jealousy is when, this is why two married women that are happily married tend not to be jealous of each other or two people in happy relationships. I always say, I select my friends tend to be happily married. I always have female friends that are happily married or happy in their relationship. When you have women, that, when it is jealousy, it's usually because they're competing over what they believe is a scarce resource. And men, they believe that if you get the man, I can't get the man. And then the jealousy starts. But when you remove men from the equation, women can get on really well. So I think uh, I always select friends that are just genuinely happy. They're happy uh, as people. But it does help when they're in happy relationships. They're not competing. What are the signs of a friend that's jealous of you? Um, they are silent when things are good for you. Mm. When things are going good, they're a bit yeah. more silent. And uh, when things are going bad, uh, they're, they're present. But when things, it's not so much about who's there for you when things are bad. Because sometimes people just like to hear gossip and like to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's when things are going good for you, they're silent. Or the, the energy shifts and stuff like that. So I would say how they respond when things are going good in your life. And you can't fake that. So, like, you know, if you tell a girl that you're pregnant and she goes a bit quiet or you're getting married, she goes a bit quiet, uh, you can't fake those responses. Yeah, so, whereas you can fake it, oh, I'm so sorry you're going, going through a divorce. You can fake that. But you can't fake your visceral reaction when things are going good for people and when people are saying good things about you. How does that person respond? Do they join in with the good comments or do they go quiet? I had a friend like that once. Yeah. Um, and I learned... Do you think it's more in Asian girls? She was actually English. Oh, really? Yeah, I've so not really experienced it much with English girls. Maybe I had a, an yeah. English friend. Bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm coming for you, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I had a friend and um, I said some good news to her. And um, one thing I learned about was facial reactions. Yeah. And her reaction was so forced. It's the good news. Uh, and, and, and I was just like, oh, wow, like you actually don't want me to do better than you or. Well, the thing is, there is no better. It's just different. Yeah. Like as in yeah. as in not better than her, but just 
I, she didn't want me to give her the news that I gave her because it was such big news. Aww. And the reaction was just so forced. And, and in my head, like, even after that, she just went quiet. Yeah, it's, uh, the, it's the quiet. It's the And she's always there for bad news. Bad news. And I say that, like, that's my number one advice is how do people respond when good things are happening for you? And uh, it's not limited to friends. It could be family as well. And it's yeah. not limited to women. It could be men as well. I, I had men when I started my Instagram and I had some male friends who were just genuinely jealous. And I'm like, why are you of jealous? What? I don't know. Of the notoriety or something like that. Not that there's any notoriety. It's just followers. It's not that deep. But I remember like a, a, a male friend of mine getting a bit bitchy with me and being like, oh, you know, you're always out for dinners in Dubai and you're always doing this. this And just that jealousy. And I, was, I don't think it's gendered. But it's usually more amongst the same gender, and men get jealous of other men as well. They just express it differently. Oh, men! Men are quite bad. Yeah, I've they're seen, really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women were just more uh, known for it and yeah. obvious about yeah. it. But men will joke about the jealousy. They'll be like, even in, when I was a teacher, I used to observe this a lot in students with uh, men with jealous boys when they compete with each other. They'd be like, ah, oh, you're so dumb. You got a D. I got a C. They're in competition with each other, but they make a joke out of it. Whereas women, they're in silent competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Women, women, I feel like women's jealousy can can become quite toxic. I feel like there's a there's a movement now. But I do think it's both way around. Sometimes I find myself as well being a little bit like, uh, I don't want to tell her this good news. And, uh, and maybe my being cautious is what's creating the, maybe it's me, maybe it's something I'm doing. Maybe it's, so I do think that I need to, we need to analyze, maybe it's a dynamic thing, but I have been quite unlucky with women throughout my life. Same. Yeah, same. I've been really unlucky, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah, uh, but God blesses you in different ways. So I've been really lucky with m males and male friends and stuff like that. I've been really, really lucky. Uh, but women, I now would put nothing past them yeah, yeah, see, in my life. Yeah, I'd put uh, nothing past it. I've had a lot of female friends. And to be honest, out of all my friends, I'm the most driven one. Yeah. So I've always been quite motivated from a young age because mm. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always to strive and be better and do more. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always the one that was working longer than all my friends, doing more than mm -hmm. all my friends, and essentially like, having three jobs at the same time. Wow. Yeah, like I've always but been see, like I've that. I've had the opposite problem where I've always been, I have no work ethic, by the way, guys, zero. I'm incredibly relaxed when it comes to work. I could take it or leave it. But success or kind of like anything, whatever you call it, just used to follow me. So even when I was a teacher, I would get really high results out of the kids. Or when I, and I'm not a hardworking person at all. Even like with the social media stuff, um, I just post it. I, it doesn't, I don't care about it. I really didn't care about it at all. I just used to post it. I didn't think anything of it. I never invested in marketing. I never, even graphic design, my page was so embarrassing. It's like GCSE artwork. You know, like, <laughs> and I don't care. To, and everyone's was like, you could be this, you should be doing that. And I'm like, I don't care about this stuff. Like I could care less. But it happens to follow me, the kind of uh, uh, reaction followed me. And I think that used to lead to a lot of jealousy because it would come a bit more effortlessly for me, a lot of things, like even, even with how maybe people would treat me nicely or whatever it is. And I felt like sometimes people get jealous of the reaction you receive from others, not even just you, just the fact that it's so easy for you to make friends or it's so easy for yeah, you to yeah, jump yeah. the queue or it's so easy for you to like get on a podcast or with this person or that person so quickly and easily. Praise be to God. This is all praise be to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I would always have the opposite problem because it looked like I was doing everything effortlessly. But I, d it, it would come. I don't have a work ethic. I have a, an. E I had an ethic to be educated, never to work, ever. So it but just came as a result. But I feel like you're doing what you love, and you're yeah, essentially praise be to God. Yeah, yeah, you are, and like a lot of the stuff that you actually attract, like you're actually putting out good information. I and try to, I yeah. try to. I try not to put anything out that's not beneficial. If it's just a bit, a bit of nonsense, I try and avoid it, but, and sometimes I do. And when I do put nonsense out, it goes viral. Like I, I always say one of my most viral videos about gold diggers and men who are broke being worried about gold diggers. And I hate that that's the most viral one because it's just nonsense. It's just me talking it to myself. So it's very true. It if you're broke, true. don't worry about a gold digger, bitch. <laughs> and like, you don't need to worry, okay? Worry about getting another job. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I generally, Generally, I do, and I hate when my nonsense goes viral um, because there's so many better things. But if it helps draw people into the uh, um, into the page, that, and then it, it's all going to work out in the long run. What do you want to be known for? Oh, that's a nice question. Um, just keeping it real. 
I feel like I'm a very un, I'm a very unbiased person. I'm very balanced. People always consider me either a misogynist or a feminist. I always get caught and labeled one, but if you get labeled both, that means you must be balanced. So I like to, I would love for people to remember me as somebody or know me as somebody who's very balanced and to remember my goal is to keep you guys together, keep relationships together, not to pit each other against each other, just keep each other together. That's what I would love to be known for. Mm -hmm. I honestly have really enjoyed this Thank podcast. Thank you. I really loved it. Um, I love being speaking to women. Yeah. And the fact that she patted my face before we uh, <laughs> before we filmed because it might be shining. I love that shit. No, anytime. So, honestly, yeah. it's been such a pleasure. I've been following you for such a long time. Uh -huh. And I'm so glad I reached out to you and yeah, you responded. Of course. And of course. Um, it's such a shame that you you might get a lot of negative comments. So much. Um, and I, do. I, I, yeah, I really, really hate that because yeah. she's you've been amazing to speak to. Thank and, and you. And you, you are literally a role model for myself oh stop in so many ways that's so not true thank you no, <laughs> no, no thank you so you are you thank are. you thank so you very much. much no thank you um just to wrap up this podcast yep. i always ask um my guests uh-huh what is your favorite quote oh my favorite quote is be grateful and i will give you more and that's from god in the quran Amazing. <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you i really appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> guys thank you so much for listening do not forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys very soon